Under normal conditions, matter can exist in three phases, solid, liquid, or vapor. Material in each phase of matter contain different amounts of internal kinetic energy. Specifically, in order for matter to transition from a solid to a liquid, and then from a liquid to a vapor, it must absorb energy from the surrounding environment. Likewise, as vapor transitions to a liquid and then to a solid, it releases energy to the environment. There are terms to describe all of these phase changes. A solid absorbing energy to become a liquid melts. A liquid absorbs energy to become a vapor by the process of vaporization. This can either occur quickly, as in boiling, or more slowly, as in evaporation. Vapor can lose energy and undergo condensation to become a liquid, and liquids lose energy and freeze to become solids. Solids can also absorb enough energy to skip the liquid phase altogether, going directly to vapor. This is called sublimation. Likewise, vapor can lose enough energy to bypass the liquid phase and go directly to a solid. This is called deposition. Each of these phase changes share a characteristic. During the transition from one phase to another, the heat absorbed or released is not associated with temperature change. To understand this, let's take a look at a chart showing temperature on the y-axis and energy as calories on the x-axis. Remembering that a calorie is the amount of energy required to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. Using this graph, let's look at water as it absorbs and releases heat. Since we're using the Celsius temperature scale, we know that below zero degrees, water is going to be a solid. At zero degrees, water undergoes a phase change from solid to liquid. Between zero and 100, it is a liquid. At 100 degrees, water undergoes another phase change from liquid to vapor, and above 100, it is a vapor or a gas. If we start with water at room temperature and have it absorb heat, we know that its temperature will increase. The more heat it absorbs, the higher its temperature will be. But something interesting happens when it reaches the temperature of the phase change from water to vapor. As it continues to absorb heat, the temperature stops rising. Instead, the added heat goes into giving the matter the energy needed to undergo the phase change. It isn't until enough energy has been absorbed to complete the phase change that additional heat again causes the temperature to rise. This is true for all phase changes. If we start again at room temperature, and this time have the water release energy to the environment, the temperature of that water will drop until it reaches zero degrees Celsius. At this point, the temperature will remain at zero even as the water continues to lose heat to the environment. Temperature remains constant as the water continues to release heat because the loss of that heat is causing the water to undergo the phase change. Once the water has completely frozen, additional re release of energy will again cause a decrease in temperature. This is called latent heat, which is the energy absorbed or released during a phase change that is not associated with a change in temperature. This can be contrasted with sensible heat, which is the absorption or release of heat that is associated with temperature change. Knowing about these periods during which energy changes without a change in temperature has some useful implications. Take a glass of water and consider the question, what is the temperature of the water in the glass? If we assume that everything is in equilibrium and the room is warmer than the water, then we can know that we are in a period of time during which the ice is undergoing a phase change to water and know with a fair amount of certainty that the water in the glass is at zero degrees and it will remain at zero degrees until all the ice is melted. So whenever you see a glass of ice water, it is safe to assume that the temperature of that water ice mixture is roughly zero degrees Celsius. Likewise, if you see a pot of boiling water, you have a situation where liquid water is undergoing a phase change to vapor. During that phase change, the water in the pot will stay at almost exactly 100 degrees until the water is completely gone. But there's more. Can you use what you know to figure out which is worse, being burned by steam at 100 degrees or by water at 100 degrees? The answer is that the steam will give you a worse burn because even though both the steam and the water are at the same temperature, the latent heat absorbed by the steam during the phase change from liquid to vapor gives the vapor much more energy than the water at the same temperature.